Hey there guys and welcome back to another video with Logie Shaw. We got Mike here and more Ethan? and more of Ethan. Game of of Game of Thrones. I couldn't find him. Could you? <laughs> he hides too well. And if he were smart, he would reveal himself. I don't like this game anymore. Maybe something happened to him. Ethan's fine. He's just forgotten this is a game. I'm here. It's okay. Don't worry. It's <laughs> just a game, Ryan. A stupid game. I don't like it. He was worried you were gone. <laughs> I thought we'd never find you again. I'm right Aww. here, and I promise, I'm not going anywhere. I wish Mira was here, and Asha, and... and Roderick. I do too, but Mira's in King's Landing and... Can't she come home? I don't want her to die too. Ryan, she's perfectly safe, I promise you. I don't want Gareth to die either. Maester Ortengrin said he got sent to the wall. I'll miss Garrett. He was nice. He'll be fine. Garrett is smart. No one will tell me what Garrett did, but it must have been serious. I heard Duncan and Sir Royland talking. They said someone will come here looking for revenge. Everyone's worried about you, but I'm not. I know you'll protect us. Who said they're worried about me? Well, Sir Royland for one. He says you can't fight very well. What? <laughs> and... He calls you a milksop. <laughs> Sir Royland forgets himself. After all, you are the lord of the house now. I don't care what he says. I can protect you. Mm. What does milksop mean? I don't know. But I know it's not good. <laughs> Ethan, you should let Sir Royland teach you how to wield a sword. Like... like a man. He taught Roderick and Asher, and he even showed me how to fight. Properly, I mean. A lord should know how to fight. Do you remember when we were younger? When we all used to play here? You, me, Roderick, Asher. When things used to be we'd all easier. Be out here for hours. Yeah. You didn't have to Where worry about I? real life situations. You weren't born yet. We had so much fun. But then, well, then everything changed. Roderick became so serious, the lord in training. And he never smiled anymore. And Asha... Asha just got angry at everything. Promise me you won't be like that. Please, just be you. I like you the way you are. I know a lord has many responsibilities. But you don't need to be like them. I don't want to get angry. But I may have to. Father did sometimes. But you're nice. Everybody says that about you. But, since you're the new lord, you can do anything you want. I suppose. <laughs> Everyone will have to do as you say. So, I could have all the sweets I want. <laughs> if only it were that simple. It would be nice if someone did what I wanted for once. But Ethan will be a good lord. A proper lord. That's not how it works. Well, that's how it should work. You are the lord. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not gonna spoil you and then turn you into a glutton. Lord I mean, Ethan, come on now. You're needed in the great hall at once. Quickly, on your feet. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry if I don't have a lot of commentary. What's the matter? Uh. Lord Whitehill has arrived, unannounced and certainly unexpected. He's come demanding justice. Can't he meet with Duncan? He is the Castellan. Stay with us. Please, Ethan. He's demanding an audience with the Lord. We really must go. It's your decision. You are the Lord. If I were Lord, I would command Ethan to stay with his family. Fine. If that's what's required of me. Very well, then. Yeah, but... Sorry if there's not a lot of commentary on my end. It kind of... The game kind of just 
keeps going. It doesn't give a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of room for commentary. It's more reactions and stuff. So sorry for that, and sorry in advance if there's not a lot of me. <laughs> they showed up unannounced. Lord Whitehill is in a lather. I assume you explained to Lord Ethan why they're here. A business with Garrett. I told him. Lord Whitehill knows Garrett is a squire to this house. Or was, I suppose. Is. Was. It makes no difference. The Whitehills were clearly in the wrong, so don't give him any satisfaction. Out there, you were decisive and firm. Now do it again with these bastards. Let's not do something rash. Hmm. Things are bad enough as it is. What should I say to him? Tell him and his men to leave. Now is not the time to anger Lord Whitehill any more than he already is. He's got five times as many men, and the backing of House Bolton. All the more reason to stand up for ourselves. Only cowards and dead men roll over. Hmm. Lord Ethan, is it? My condolences for your father and brother. The late Lord Forrester was no friend to me or my house, but to his family it's still a loss. My only regret is I wasn't there to drive the dagger into his heart myself. Oh. I've been waiting for this day all my life. The Foresters finally get their due. How dare you! I dare! And I'll do as I damn well please. Ah, uh, so it's gonna no be like that. What kind of fucking house receives a lord with no fucking bread and salt? You bloody amateur. No courtesies. I should have expected as much. Bloody foresters. Fetch Lord Whitehill some bread and salt. It was an oversight, Lord Whitehill. I promise it won't happen again. Not likely. You foresters have shit on us for generations. Well, now the Starks are no longer around to have your back, are they? We're the power in the North now. Roose Bolton is the Warden of the North. Aye, and we've been his bannermen for five fucking centuries, you cunt. Hmm. Lord Ethan, you're losing control of this. Lord Whitehill, please. I'm not finished. Maybe if you hadn't been so fucking greedy with the ironwood, things would have been different between us. You squandered your share. Our share was taken from us. We had no fucking choice but to harvest what was left. What is it you want, Lord Whitehill? Oh, it's him. Your man, the squire. We were minding our own business. Keeping Bullshit. the king's peace, as his lordship here said. When your man attacked us for no reason. Yeah, that's it. Attacked for no reason. No reason? You murdered his family. Then you admit it was your man who killed my men. And a pig farmer at that. How do you answer for your squire? What does that say Lord Ethan? about your men? He acted in your name. And you are the lord of this house. We lost people too, Lord Whitehill. Your men murdered his entire family. You lost pig farmers, not soldiers. The soldiers worth a hundred of their type. Where's the fucking coward who killed my men? I know he's here. What have you done with him? He was sent to the wall. Who the fuck sent him to the wall? Answer me. Who's the one who did it? I did. What? That was my justice to deliver, boy. And you denied me of it. I'm not leaving until I have my justice. Now bring me the coward who did it, or you'll answer to Roose Bolton. What kind of fucking house is this? A house of honorable men. Hmm. Lady Forrester. You bellow like a wounded boar, Lord Whitehill. Have you forgotten your manners? I mean no disrespect to you, my lady, considering your losses and all. But this... this is not over! It's over when my son says it is. This is over, Lord Whitehill. Ethan is Lord of Ironrath now. By rights, his word is law here. If that displeases you, 
Then I trust you can find the door. There you go, Mum. That lad may be lord of this house, but Lord Bolton will have the final say. I'll send him a raven letting him know a Forester man killed one of his own. That the new Lord Forester lied to my face and denied me my justice. Then we'll see whose word is law. Nope, not gonna say anything. Do your worst, you bastard. You must find your voice, my lord. Your enemies will interpret your silence as a sign of weakness. You were brave, my son. But you'll need to be braver still when Ramsay Snow arrives to see you bend the knee. Prepare a raven. We need to send word to Mira in King's Landing at once. Well then. There's a Your sister can help us. good bit of tension here. <laughs> Although just a handmaiden, she has Marjorie Tyrell's favor. And Lady Marjorie's betrothal to the king may be enough to keep the Boltons at bay. If it's presented to her as it should be. Oh. Alright, so we're Mira now. I do hope this is our room. <laughs> it was very kind of Lady Marjorie to give this to me. It once belonged to Lady Elena. Ethan made this for me. Asha sent me this coin, to remember him. What a strange place, Essos. An unfinished letter? Uh. Oh. I hit look at, not read. <laughs> Father. Much excitement here in King's Landing for the coming wedding. Lady Marjorie has proven to be quite popular throughout the city. I do wish you and Mother could come, although I know it would be impossible under the circumstances. I miss all of you, and I look forward to the day you can. Mm. Yeah, I can only imagine how she's dealing with this, you know, to hear of what's happened because you know she knows but to hear what's happened and yet be so far away wonders made by man by Lomas Longstrider a gift from Roderick I hope to see them all someday Ooh, look Landing. out the window let me I see if it's sunny at Ironrath today. I mean, they're part of the north, so <laughs> not a whole lot of a whole lot of sun that way. It troubles me to even ask this of you, but you must appeal to Lady Marjorie to intervene on our behalf. She is our best hope and can be a powerful ally, especially now when your family so desperately needs her help. Who be that knocking at my chamber door? One moment. Oh, sorry, my lady. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I can come back later if you'd like. No, it's fine. Come in. I 
begging your pardon, my lady, but you all right? If you don't mind my asking, you seem rather upset. I'm just worried about my family. Ah, letter from home, is it? It's kind of you to ask. Of course, my lady. You've always been kind to me. Please hurry if you can. Lady Marjorie will be here any minute. Of course, my lady. You hmm. work for Lady Marjorie? I may be wrong, but it seems like you do. I'm her handmaiden. That's what I thought. I've seen you with her before. You seem like good friends. I saw Lady Marjorie just this morning, outside the Royal Sept, talking to Queen Cersei. Cersei? They appeared to be having some sort of disagreement. I couldn't hear much, but it was definitely an argument. What did they say? I couldn't make out much, but I know they were talking about the Starks and, and House Forrester. House Forrester? Interesting. I hope you're not in any kind of trouble. But I thought you ought to know. Most people don't tend to notice a cold boy. Not in King's Landing with so many lords and ladies about. You see and hear all sorts of things when people don't even know you're there. Hmm. Good night, my lady. So he might be a good little, you know, eyes and ears. Oh, hi. Lady Marjorie, you're early. I was hoping there would be time for us to talk. Come, there's something we must discuss. Okay. From the day you arrived in Highgarden, I've thought of you more as a friend than as my handmaiden. A dear friend, in fact. Thank you, my lady. And you know how I feel about what's happened to your family. I feel your pain as if it were my own. What you've suffered is beyond imagining. And your poor family as well. You're very kind, my lady. Of course, Mira. But you must not despair. We will get through this together. You must understand there are limits to what I can say, especially here in King's Landing, now that I am to be queen. To have a handmaiden from the North whose family fought for Rob Stark, it raises questions at a time I can least afford. Cersei herself cornered me this morning outside the Royal Sept. She mentioned the Northern girl in my service, and she painted you a traitor. She was very pleased with herself. Her face was full of mirth as she said it. What does she intend to do? <sighs> she intends to make you miserable, knowing that will make me miserable as well. She demands an audience. She wants an apology of some sort, for what I don't know, but <coughs> she's waiting for us now, and I promised I would bring you to her. I wouldn't ask this of you if it were not important. I cannot afford any conflict with Cersei with the wedding so near. What do I say? Find a way to appease her. Humor her. Tell her what she wants to hear. Hmm. See if the Queen Regent is ready to receive us. Yeah, I don't think that Lady Marjorie, as nice as she seems to be, and as friendly as they seem to be, don't think that she would be, be able fine. to help. I know you will. You may feel one thing, but you must say another. You can do this. Oh, I thought we were walking for a minute. <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> We are walking. Ah, Lady Marjorie. Tyrion Lannister. Lovely this evening? Lord Tyrion. Your Grace? With your permission, allow me to introduce Lady Mira of House Forrester.
I am honored, Your Grace. Hmm. Yet not honored enough to kneel, I see. House Forrester is a northern house loyal to the king. Are they? I beg your pardon, Your Grace. I wasn't talking to you. I want to hear from the girl. <laughs> is your family loyal to the king? Perhaps you should ask the new Lord Forrester. He's not here, is he? She is. The girl can speak for her house. House Forrester's loyalty to the crown never wavers, Your Grace. I see. And yet. For centuries, the Foresters have been loyal bannermen to House Stark. A house of traitors. They were the Wardens of the North. We all served at the pleasure of the King. Clever girl. Perhaps too clever for her own good. The girl did say the loyalty was unwavering. She has a talent for equivocation, yet I question what she really thinks. Is your house willing to swear fealty to your new liege lord, Roos Bolton? Roos Bolton also served the Starks, Your Grace. And proved his loyalty to the Crown by bringing their house to a swift and sudden end. Old allegiances are not easily abandoned. But now that the war is over, we must look to rebuild and forge new alliances. There are ships and shields to be built, and Joffrey will need a steady supply of ironwood for his armies. I'm told there are others who would happily serve that purpose. But I trust we can rely on House Forrester. Forster Ironwood does seem rather unique. Our talent is unrivaled, Your Grace. Forrester Ironwood is highly sought after in the Seven Kingdoms. So I'm told. And exceeded only by your lack of humility. <laughs> it would be a shame to see it fall into the hands of another house. I imagine you'd do almost anything to prevent that from happening, wouldn't you? Ask any Lannister, and they'd do whatever was necessary to save Casterly Rock. It would be unfortunate to see another house lay claim to what's yours. Yes, Your Grace. I would do anything. I see. What would you have the girl do, Cersei? It's not as if she fought beside the Starks, wielding a battle axe for the Northern Army. <laughs> No, she's been here. It raises an interesting question, I suppose. Can we truly blame those who end up on the wrong side of the war? Our dear Marjorie here was betrothed to Renly Baratheon on the false assumption that he would one day rule the Seven Kingdoms. Can we fault her for her mistake? Should she be held accountable? I'm sure she regrets it. Perhaps. Perhaps not. If there's a point to this, I hope you find it quickly. Loyalty can be such a hard thing to define. This city alone is filled with all sorts of ambitious opportunists looking to reinvent themselves. Pretending to be something they're not. I don't like how Marjorie keeps looking at us. Within their hearts. <laughs> you are a girl from the north here in service to Lady Marjorie. One can only assume her interests are yours. Yet loyalty to a king, that must be absolute, beyond question. And if your loyalties were to become conflicted between your king and the very person whom you serve, what would you do then? I'm sure Let she would- Let the girl answer the question. Go on. My loyalties would never conflict, your grace. That's a coward's answer. I will not have my time wasted by a northern girl who thinks she can play games. Who do you choose? Ah. Gosh. Marjorie, said, don't you get mad. I was beginning to worry you didn't have your priorities straight. Because you said to tell her what she wanted to hear. She is a threat to the crown, isn't she? The most dangerous handmaiden in all of King's Landing. I'm not quite sure what to make of her. Not surprising, I suppose, for a northern girl, but not very encouraging either. I'd like a word with you, if I may. Of course, Your Grace. Oh, I didn't like that look.
I'll walk you out. <laughs> this may come as a surprise, but I met your father once, at the tourney at Lannisport. Even then he didn't trust Ruse Bolton. We only spoke briefly, but your father struck me as an honorable man. You have my condolences for his loss. These would be trying times for your family, even under the best of circumstances. Thank you, Lord Tyrion. That's very kind of you to say. That certainly took courage. To so publicly declare your loyalty to Joffrey for all to hear. Poor Lady Marjorie was humiliated, although Cersei seemed quite pleased. Which was what it was Lady Marjorie the wanted. First impression. I, of course, found it all highly entertaining. My sister and I yeah, have no our response there. She takes great pleasure in her little charades. I take mine in thwarting them. We must find our amusements where we can. She threatened to give your ironwood to another house. It is the master of coin who decides such matters. The crown needs boats. Boats need wood, and I speak for the crown in this regard. Not her. What are you suggesting? I suppose the Crown could be persuaded to secure Ironwood from House Forrester. Lady Marjorie might not look favorably on such an alliance. And it would infuriate Cersei. Although what would be amusing for me might prove rather dangerous for you and your house. Hmm. Are you willing to risk that? It may be far too dangerous. Hmm. In fact, forget I even suggested such a thing. I'm sorry, Lord Tony. Ah, I can't. But it's a risk I cannot afford. I admire your discretion. Now, if you'll excuse me, I promised Sansa I would join her for dinner tonight. Three beautiful bottles of Dornish wine await my arrival. The mere thought of them makes me thirsty already. I hope we meet again. Nothing would make Cersei happier. Until then, be careful. This is not the North. King's Landing can be a nest of vipers to the uninitiated. Yeah. I didn't go along with it, even though I wanted to, because I don't feel that Mira would have. Mira, in this state, she, she has to be very, very careful. And being very, very careful... Mira, I was She kind of has to, well... How was it? Care more for herself right now. Cersei has a way of looking at you as though you're nothing. It's more than a little intimidating. It didn't go very well. I'm sorry. Cersei is known for being rather difficult. But at least it's over now. Lady Marjorie has spent the entire day working on seating arrangements for the wedding. Of course, you and I are seated way at the back. Here with the fourth cousins and the ninth born sons. <laughs> Sir Jamie. I wouldn't mind tarnishing that white cloak of his. Sarah? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's true. And Oberyn Martell, the Red Viper. I'm told he has a paramour. Which I doubt is Dornish for wife. Put it back. We're just having a bit of fun. It's probably for the best. I've heard he's a bit perverse. Perhaps Lady Marjorie could make the right introductions. Who knows? We might meet our future husbands. Although, marrying a king? I can only imagine what that would be like. <laughs> Considering which king it's would supposed you marry to be? Joffrey, if it meant you'd become queen. No. He does have a certain look about him. And he's always treated Lady Marjorie well. I don't want to be queen, no matter who I'd have to marry. Don't want to be queen? No. You northerners. You'd make a perfect scepter. Well, I would marry him. Imagine the power you would have as queen of the Seven Kingdoms. None. <laughs> I might even allow you to be my handmaiden. Let's see, who else should we marry off? Brian of Tarth and Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> what a perfect match! Sir Bronn and. What are you doing? Mm hmm. Told you to put it back. Well. Sarah? I'm sorry, my lady. As am I. We shouldn't have been messing about. 
This is not a game. It's a battle plan. Allies and enemies can be made with every move. Yet they say it is men who are powerful. The Queen was pleased by your display, Mira. You're not I'm mad, are you? It's over. Y you understand why, right? King's Landing can be exhausting sometimes. There's always someone to please or some perceived slight to smooth over. I fear it will only get worse when I am queen. Once they know your true heart, the lords and ladies will have no choice but to love you. Do you agree? Once you are queen, the lords and ladies will do their best to please you. You learn very quickly. Your words to Cersei were brave. But I know you must fear what the Boltons might do to your family. I do yeah. appreciate your willingness to appease her, as difficult as it may have been. Thank you, my lady. There's been something on my mind. Something important. She's not gonna help, though. She won't be able to. It'll be an opening for the Queen. So she wouldn't do it. So if Mira asks, that's going to be a bad. So Mira, who seems to be a smart girl, would know that it's, it's, it would be fruitless to ask. So I'm not going to ask my for My mother help. wanted me to ask a favor of you, for my family. But as you said, you're in a delicate position now with the wedding so near. And I would never want to jeopardize that. Soon I will be queen, and maybe then I'll be in a better position to help you. But for now, now we must both be cautious. Uh -huh. Of course, my lady, you're right. Better to wait. But does, I was going to say, it doesn't mean we have to wait staring at each other until something happens. King's Road. Wolf's wood. <laughs> hmm, excuse me. Seven elves. Oh, yep. I am loyal to your father. I am loyal to have both of you. No. Let's play a little game, shall we? Oh, you. Did you know my ancestors wore the skins of their enemies as a coat? <gasps> Not my best work, unfortunately. I suppose I have full enough practice. But he didn't make it easy. What with all that bloody noise? <laughs> like a drowning cat. I thought he'd never stop. As my father likes to say, a naked man holds few secrets. But the flayed man, the flayed man holds none. Pity he didn't know your father is the Warden of the North. <laughs> he does now. How much further is it to these foresters? A day, my lord. Two at most. What was that? My lord? Shh! Listen! There. Hear that? I know I heard something. Never mind. We've wasted enough time already. <sighs> See, it doesn't give time to think about any of these decisions. So it's like, uh, okay, let's pick that. I 
it doesn't seem to be screaming anymore. Oh, Bloody wow. Hell. It's not funny. It's it's just the way that it 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 transitioned and it froze on his face. Lord Ethan, as I was saying, you are young, and there are those within these walls who are uncertain of your leadership. But three hundred generations of Forester Lords stand behind you. Lord Gerhard the Tall, who founded our house, and your grandfather, Lord Thorin the Bold, who seized back the river valley from the White Hills. What did they call my father? Lord Gregor the Good. He was fair and wise, and courageous in battle. I want to be like that, like my father. Your father was well regarded by nearly everyone. It took years, if not decades, to earn. These were your father's people to lead and protect, and now they're yours. But your father did not bear this responsibility alone. He and every forester lord before him chose one man whom they trusted above all others. The Lord Sentinel. Forester traditions demand that a new Lord Sentinel must be chosen. Nothing wrong. I was only trying to survive. Lord Ethan, Mister, who is this man? This Craven is a deserter and a thief. This house is doomed. We all fucking know it. Quiet, thief. Eric was supposed to be guarding our weapons, but instead we caught him stealing them. Oh, yeah, that's, that's two bad. Two shields and three spears. Why did you do it? Because I've no wish to die. Yes, my lord, I fled. We should all flee. It's not stealing if you're taking what's yours by right. He speaks She's truth. Right. I've a family to feed. And not two coins to rub together since Lord Gregor left us to rot here. Where's our pay? Our share of bread and wine grows smaller every day. <laughs> Leave the poor man alone. Go. Lord Ethan, I know these words are hard, but they're honest. This house is falling. We'll never survive the coming winter. Most of us won't even live to see it. We are in this together. You say that. But it won't be you who's starving come winter. You'll address him as Lord. Lord Ethan, you must decide the punishment. Lord Gregor always took a thief's fingers. Three of them. Now may not be the time for harsh punishment. The men are on edge as it the is. The men need to know they cannot do whatever the fuck they please. Their Lord He's got a point. I mean, even Gregor the, the Good... Wall. Even Gregor the Good. I will decide. Send him to the wall. He's a thief. If you punish me, you'll be punishing an innocent man. It will be an injustice, my lord. You're not innocent, though. Please, my lord. My family depends on me. Oh, you shouldn't have... <sighs> I understand the need for survival, but you did a bad. You stole. And even with Gregor the Good, you stealing would be three fingers. You can still work with losing those three fingers, just not, you know, obviously as well. <sighs> but if you let him go, then anyone can just steal stuff. You send him to the wall. I mean, it's still showing people, hey, you know, I can get out and get up, you know, get off easy. I, Ethan of House Forrester, 
Lord of Ironrath, name you a thief. The price for your crime is three of your fingers. No, please, my lord! My lord, please! Please, no! My lord, normally it is the lord's duty to carry out the sentence. But I am willing to carry it out. If you nah. feel ready. I will carry out the sentence. This is injustice, my lord! I hate to have done it, but that was certainly unpleasant. But a lord must meet out punishment when it's due. Not just yourself, of course. You can weigh on any lord. It's a lord's duty, so I did it. You heard what the thief said. I expect this sort of thing will happen again. But a sentinel can help you in the face of disloyalty. You need someone you can trust by your side. Someone you can rely on, no matter the circumstance. Possessing wisdom and experience. Who do you think I should choose? There are two capable men for the role. They both want the job, but neither thinks very highly of the other. How do I decide between them? Talk to them. Solicit the opinion of people close to you. Here. The Bracer of the Sentinel. The Badge of Office. Tonight is your first small council meeting. It would be wise to bestow this bracer upon your chosen sentinel then, to show that you are decisive and in control of this house. Your sentinel will wear this for all to see. I understand. I'll do it now. Come speak with me when you're ready to convene the small council, my lord. <sighs> all right then. So it's either dude man there or the uncle. So we've already seen the kind of people they are. And Oh. Let's talk to Duncan. Duncan. Yes, my lord. I have much to consider and face a difficult decision. Perhaps I can help. Your father often sought my counsel. As lord, I must name a sentinel. Of course. And if I may ask, who do you favor for the role? Perhaps I can share my insight. And talking can sometimes help you make a decision. I'm Do thinking. You think, Sir Royland? Do you trust him? Yeah. He's a fine warrior, my lord. But he's nowhere near ready to serve a sentinel. I do not trust him. He's likely to lose his temper and get us all killed. And at the worst possible time. Thank you, Duncan. I appreciate your advice. I'm at your service, my lord. Hmm. So I can see where he was going with like the temper. Are you gonna? Nope, she's not talking to me. Malcolm? Who's Malcolm? Ethan. Or should I say Lord Ethan? Hello, Uncle Malcolm. I oh. saw what you did today. It's not an easy thing to do, dealing out a harsh punishment, no matter how warranted. But if you'll excuse me, my lord, I should finish packing before nightfall. I hope to be off tomorrow. At first light. Uncle, why are you packing? You're not going somewhere, are you? Your mother asked me to cross the narrow sea to find your brother, Asher. Asher? Ah. She asked me to return with him. To help the house. She said nothing of this to me. Because she fears you will not agree. 
I told her my place is here, but I'll be of no help to you in Essos. But she insisted. I will hold, of course, until you've spoken with her about this. Just try to be kind to her. She's been living a nightmare made real. But you know that just as well. She's my mother. I know how to speak to her. I'm sure you do. But my mother's fears are not the only ones I face. My people are scared as well. I'm told I must choose a sentinel. If I may be so bold, Sir Royland is the man for the job. He'd be a fine choice. And I'd trust him. Why Sir Royland? We hmm. are at war. So he, you need he a warrior agrees. by your side. Royland has the respect of his men and will bring strength and discipline to this house. Duncan mm -hmm. would offer sage advice, but now is not the time to negotiate. Not for yeah, the likes of Ramsay Snow. There's no you, negotiation with them. Ethan, that I need much to talk to you. Is evident. Well, I mean, it's good to know that, you know, our uncle agrees with what I was thinking. I saw what you did to that man. Mm hmm. The way you punished him. Mm hmm. How could you be so cruel? Our I'm father has you. literally done the same thing. What am I supposed thing? to think? Do you think it's easy? I'm the third born son. Father never prepared me for this. I'm doing the best I can. I know you are, Ethan. I know. I know you said you'd get angry sometimes, but I didn't think I'd see it so soon. I can't afford any more mistakes. Everyone knows what happened with Lord Whitehill. Garrod being sent to the wall without my knowledge. I know. And that wasn't your fault. Well, I'm the Lord. It's my responsibility. The people want me to lead. They need me to, but... What? Ethan, please. Tell me. I... I wish Father were here. We all do, but Father is gone. You are the Lord of this house, which is why you must be strong. You're just as capable as Asher or Roderick ever were. I know it. I only wish you did too. You've always given me good advice. Thank you. Alright. So... Swords up! You can lift them, yeah? So, I, I have my decision. I'm going to go with Sir Roiland. So, let's go talk to the maester, because I think I have to tell him that I've made my decision. Maester? Yes, Lord Ethan. Are you prepared to name your sentinel? What, what is, is it you're doing his... over here? Admiring the ironwood, my lord. Oh. I studied it at the Citadel. The wood may be black, but I see gold. An entire forest of gold. What do you mean? It is our greatest asset, my lord. Why not give some of our ironwood to House Bolton and have them leave us be? We could ransom ourselves. That's not how that's you gonna work. You can hardly work. put a price on your own life. Or the lives of those you love. Ransom or a robbery? We may pay him now, but what's to stop him from coming back again? Lord Ethan, the dangers of today outweigh the fears of tomorrow. I don't know about that. Why would the maester want us to give up the only thing we have going for us? That's kind of a red flag there. My lord, and I don't are you know now how ready to that. name your sentinel? Yes, maester. I'm ready. Very well. I will convene the small council at once. may sit. I believe Lord Ethan has reached his decision. Before I name my sentinel, I must tell you. Duncan, Royland, 
This house needs you both. But you can only choose one, my lord. Let him be on with it. Many thought either of you would make a fine sentinel, but I have made my decision. <laughs> Sir Royland. Sir Royland de Gore, you will be my sentinel. Gods be praised. You've done well, Lord Ethan. You won't regret this. A poor choice, my lord. Forgive me for saying so, but it's true. Now, Sentinel, what do you have to report of Ramsey Snow? My scouts say he's a day's ride away. We've no time to waste. He'll arrive before any of our allies could be here. Who knows what he's capable of? We need to prepare for the worst. We can devise a plan to deal with him. The Boltons need our people to harvest the ironwood. Even the bastard Ramsey must understand that. He's not coming here to negotiate. We no. must answer with the sword. That's bloody suicide. You gamble with the lives of everyone within these walls. Quiet, Tottenham. <sighs> You're not the Sentinel. I knew this would happen. He cannot be trusted. This is the small council, is Stop it? Stop it. Enough! Would my father have stood for this kind of bickering? Neither will I. The Bolton sigil is a flayed man. Force is the only thing they understand. Put every man who can hold a spear or crossbow on the wall and make the bastard fill his boots with piss. He would see it for the empty gesture that it is and have us flayed. We must take a measured approach, my lord. Gentlemen, please. Mother, what do you recommend we do? We must give him whatever he wants and be done with it. It's too dangerous to do otherwise. But he's literally going to want everything. Why not make an offering for peace, my lord? Yeah, the wisdom of the Citadel. We can give the Boltons ironwood in exchange for their protection. You must be mad. It's pure folly to just give away the only currency we have to bargain with. Enough! Yeah. Ha! <sighs> See, I don't like these decisions because I know that it's important. Can't give up our iron wood. So, no to the bargain. So, at least fight or diplomacy. We're outnumbered, but theoretically we could stand up to it. But diplomacy, whereas that's good in theory, I don't feel like it's going to work. They're not there for negotiation they're there for blood so I feel like really the only chance we have is to fight but I also think that that's going to end everything <sighs> alright my sentinel is skilled in the ways of war our forces may not be at full strength, but our men are willing to take on this fight. I think Ramsay Snow will see that too. They may be willing, but are they able, my lord? My lord, casting aside diplomacy means giving up our best chance to come through this safely. Ethan has made his opinion known, and you will respect his decision. Forgive us, my lord. We are, of course, here to serve you. As we served your father. Aye. Well then, let's decide how we shall set the stage for Ramsay's arrival. You meet him at the gate with as much force as we can muster. Make him wait. Let him gaze upon Ironrath. And when he enters, he'll know it's only because you allowed it. We don't have enough soldiers to strike fear in a madman like Ramsay Snow. Invite him into this hall and meet him face to face, lord to lord. Lord Ethan? Another important decision, I'm sure. Do 
we just let him waltz right on in or we have him wait at the gate I feel like wait, having him wait at the gate he's gonna have an army and it's just gonna piss him off if we can get him to come into the great hall then we might be able to just deal with him directly you know like head of the snake type deal maybe because you know he would come in with like the important people I don't like these decisions. All right. I will meet him in the Great Hall. It's careless. Can't you see Tuttle is steering you wrong? I've faithfully served this house for far too long to sit here and listen to this. Forgive me, my lord, but you are far too young to be the lord of this house. You're likely to get us all killed. Sit down at once. Apologies, my son. But now that it is settled, we know what we must do. You will meet Ramsay Snow in the Great Hall, and we will not offer our ironwood. No matter what, I will stand beside you, my lord, where your sentinel belongs. Then perhaps we should adjourn. We have to prepare the house. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and call the episode here, and when we Hello. come back... You have named your Sentinel, but you still seem conflicted. And no matter what, you can't be indecisive. Not if you want to help this house. And when we come back, Forgive we'll hop me. right on into it. There will always be those who question your leadership, which is why you need allies you can rely on. Family. What about your brother, Asher? Malcolm told me. You want to bring him back. He's a skilled fighter. But what's more, he has the will to fight. A hunger for it. He always protected you and your sister. Yes, I hear what you're saying. Do you remember the Miller's boy? How he tormented you? I wanted to intervene, but your father said... Ethan must fight his own battles. But when Asher saw it, he didn't take a breath. He grabbed the Miller's boy by the neck. That was his first instinct. Asher knocked out half the poor boy's teeth. Of course, your father was furious, but you were in danger and there was nothing else Asher needed to know. Asher does not hesitate. He acts, and we need that. You have many fine qualities. But you do not have that anger inside you. It's something we could use. You're a thinker, Ethan. You contemplate, and a lord needs that. But a lord also needs swords. Ah, yeah, she's right. I'm trying to do what's best for this family. Ethan, let me send Malcolm to Essos. Yeah. Fine. Malcolm will go to Essos and bring Asher back. Thank you, Ethan. I'm glad you will let me do this. Know that you never stand alone. You are a forester. Mira stands with us, and she may be able to help us yet. Alright, no. I'm calling the episode here. This has gone on for a bit. But when we come back, we'll hop right back on into it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.